Hello, friends. Welcome to The Shed. It's Wednesday. How was your day today? As always, please answer that question in the comments. Tell me how your day was. Love chatting with you. I love talking with you. Just about anything. And I try to respond to everybody. Obviously, I delete the trolls. But we, you know what? This, this channel is still really small. And so we don't get a lot of that, which is great. Um, the occasional, you know, troll video or troll comment shows up. So I delete those people. But everybody else... I try to respond to you, and sometimes I even respond to the trolls. So feel free to tell me about your day in the comments down below. It's Wednesday today. That means it's game night for me. I'm going to play hopefully some good board games with friends. But um, that also means that I try to make Wednesday's episode lighter because I have to come home and shoot it and go. And So today I had an idea to talk about a particular tool. And I, you know, I'm going to shove that off because I read something today that really made, gave me pause to think, and it was a comment from one of you, um, of a longtime friend of the show, Brad Richards, who has shown us his car and other things, uh, posted a comment, and in that comment he included a quote, I think it's a quote, I've never been exposed to it before, when I read it out loud, some people at work were like, yeah, I've heard of that, and it was, I try to be the person that my dog thinks I am, and that was just kind of like, wow, that's really strong, I, I want that on a shirt, right, I, I really literally want that on a shirt. Be the person your dog thinks you are. And, and and so as I was leaving work today, to for those of you who aren't aware, I'm an IT guy. And my, my day job is IT, and I literally do the full spectrum. I work for the Board of Education, which means that we just have to be on call for anything. I'll do everything from server installation, network management, network design and engineering, uh, to basic user desktop maintenance, installing printers and whatever it might be. And part of the reason that I love that job is the fact that it's not some specialized thing. I get to do a little bit of everything. That means I'm not good at any of it, but I'm good enough. And if you've worked in any sort of IT environment where you're understaffed, and most probably are, good enough is oftentimes just showing up. Oftentimes, my the, the biggest... Not biggest. Oftentimes, the most help I can give a person is just showing up and, and smiling and saying, it's okay, you got this, and then walking them through whatever their issue is. You know, I've done, I've done work that's literally I walk into a room and I hit a button and say, you just had that turned off. And they go, I'm so stupid. And like, no, you're not. You just, you, you know, you're a teacher, your, your mind is focused on this task, your, your lesson plans and your teaching. And but for me, it's just like, oh, you did this. And, uh, and so just showing up, just walking in, smiling, hey, how are you? Let's do this. You know, no worries. I tell people all the time, there's nothing that you can break that I can't fix. Obviously, that is uh, that has limits, dollar limits. And in the education industry, that's important. But I try to tell them, if you don't know how to do something on your computer, just try. I'll fix it if you screw it up. I promise. Just go for it. And so being the person that my dog thinks I am is is what I, I've always, I guess I've always tried to be that person. And I've always uh, tried to present myself in, in the public's eye, at least, in a way that is um, engaging, not not affronting. I definitely don't want to, you know, give people the impression that I am hostile. I'm six foot four. I'm 230 pounds. I'm a big guy. When I walk in a room, that's a big dude, <laughs> right? And I, and I try to shake that off by smiling, by making people smile. If I can make you smile and I can make you laugh and I can give your day a slight tweak, that's, that's half of my job, literally. Just, even if I show up and I can't fix it, I, which happens, it, it's going to happen. There, it's technology. Stuff happens. If I show up and I, and I can't fix it, but I've given you a positive experience and I've helped your day be better and I've made you smile, I could leave there and that person is 100% satisfied, even though their problem's not solved. That's just life. 
be the person your dog thinks you are. That was an, that's an amazing quote. I, mean, I don't know where it came from. I haven't had a chance to research it because I, I immediately came home, turned the camera on, let's do this so I can edit and go and board game night. And yeah, um, but that was on yesterday's video, which has gotten a lot of strong positive response. I'm really thankful for everybody's thoughts on the person that I portray here on, on the camera uh, versus the person that I am in real life. Um, I've also worked with some people, uh, well, not people, but a particular person who is like one of my favorite people in the world who I'm going to see in a few weeks. And maybe maybe I'm going to have a guest uh, on the show. Uh, it won't be here. We're going to be elsewhere. But, um, and I got a story to tell you about that also. But that'll be in a couple weeks. So, um, really, I just, I just wanted to tell you, I just wanted to share that quote with you. Be the person your dog thinks you are. Because that's powerful. That, that is, you probably show your dog the happiest version of you there is. And just try to be that for everybody else. Try to, try to, try to make people smile. It's not that hard. It really isn't. In today's society, it's just a, it's just showing patience and empathy is really the main two things that you need that a lot of people seem to be lacking these days. So, yeah, I don't know. Short talk today. I, I hope maybe that meant something to you. I really thank Brad for leaving the comment. I thank you all for leaving comments on the video. Um, that really means the world to me. Continue to do that. Um, if you come back each day, let me know how your day went. I'm really curious. I sit here in front of this camera every day and tell you how my day went. Or at least give you insight into how my day went by my mood and all that sort of stuff. I would like to hear about your day. And I would like for you to put that in the comments below. So that we can chat about it. Because it's fun. So thank you guys for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. More importantly... Uh, I had a chat with somebody on Facebook the other day who said I don't have a YouTube account. I feel bad that I can't I can't give you the like, I can't um, subscribe, that sort of stuff. You know what? If the number one thing you could do is copy the URL that's up here in your menu bar or the one, there's a share button down below. Copy that and just paste it somewhere. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, wherever you feel like people would appreciate the conversations that we have, share it somewhere. Say, hey, this guy's doing something, you should watch this. That helps the show more than dollars, more than likes and comments and anything else you could possibly do. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sending me stuff for Friday. Continue doing that to my email address, chevy at the daily shed.com. Send me anything and I'll put it up on the show on Friday. Any Friday. It's a, that's just an ongoing offer. And um, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey doc, wait, I wanna ask you something. Today's random fact comes from sportsecyclopedia.com. That's a cool, I like that. Sports Encyclopedia. Huh, not in. Encyclopedia. Anyway, where did the New York Jets get their name? This is a question I've always had, and I'm not a football fan, so I don't know this one. New York Jets, 1960 to president, nickname, named in 1963 after the Jets that flew overhead at Shea Stadium, their home starting in 1964 from nearby LaGuardia Airport. It also gave them a name that rhymed with Mets, so those who shared stay, those who shared Shea Stadium with at the time. I never know that, Mets and Jets. That, dude, that makes so much sense. And I guess LaGuardia Airport was right there. Totally makes sense, I had no clue.